So I've just finished my very first Max for Life device and it helps fix four issues I've got with Ableton and my workflow within it. You can download it for free and I'll give you details about that later in the video, but let's just jump into Ableton and I'll show you how it works. So I've called the plugin Transport Time and I've installed it in my user library within Ableton. If you want to get to that, just right click on it within Places, Show in Finder, and that will show you the folder. You can just drag and drop it wherever you want to within there. Now you can actually put this wherever you want within your project. I usually put it on my master channel just before everything else. As soon as you put it on a channel, it will pop up with this little window. This window you can put wherever you want to. I've made it quite small, but I wanted the text to be quite large so you can see it quite easily. But I usually put it in my top right hand corner about here. So the main use of Transport Time is that it actually gives you a feature that most other doors have as standard, and that is a large readout of the time. So wherever your cursor is within your project, it will give you the current bar and current time. And this works obviously when you're playing it through as well. Oh, baby. And this is where it solves the first issue for me. I tend to do a lot of sessions over Zoom and when you're doing it through Zoom, it's very hard to see the time ruler at the bottom and the bar ruler at the top. It's very hard to see what those figures are on such a digitized, pixelized kind of screen. So having that clock nice and large somewhere on screen just allows the other person on Zoom to be able to see the current time a lot easier than trying to squint at the little bars at the top and the bottom. The second feature that it adds is being able to see the length of the current track really quickly without having to zoom zoom into the end of your track to see where it ends. You have to zoom right in to get a good figure as to how long your actual track is. There is actually a readout at the top right hand corner that shows you the length in bars and in time very quickly. This is really useful if you're trying to hit a certain mark in time. For example, say you have a track that you're trying to cut down to a certain length. It just gives you that readout really quickly. So those first two features are kind of nice things to have within Ableton. It just makes your workflow a bit quicker. But the third feature is the reason I designed this plugin. Now, as a dance music producer, I tend to make an extended club version of a track and then have to cut it down to a smaller edit for things like Spotify. So my track is currently at five minutes long. So the first thing I'll probably do is actually just take out the intro. So the first maybe 16 bars, I'll get rid of that. So I've gone ahead and removed the first 16 bars of this project. Now, what I could have done is just deleted the time within here. However, what you can see is this vocal kind of starts before the bar. Oh, baby. Now, I don't really want to kind of start this right here because it will just kind of chop the vocal off then. Baby. I really want it to have that nice kind of intro and maybe I want to like copy this reverse stab over here as well. Oh, baby. So that gives it a really kind of nice intro for Spotify. However, I have a whole load of blank bars here and my track now starts at 30 seconds in, which is kind of annoying because already your timing is out. The, the start of the track is right here at bar 17. So your time ruler at the bottom is no longer correct. And this is why I added this really important feature to this plugin. So you can see within here in this transport time, it actually says we're on bar 17 and we're starting at 30 seconds in. But what I can do is press this button here called offset. This will set a new start point for the project. Now this doesn't change your project in any way whatsoever, but what it does do is it kind of resets the time within here and that becomes the new starting point. Baby. So for example, if you are making an edit of a track, you send it off to the record label and they come back with some revisions. Maybe they say that 45 seconds into the track, they want something changing. Well, usually in the past, you'd have to kind of go through and do some mathematics. You'd have to take 45 seconds in, but then add 30 seconds because that's how much blank space you got at the start of the track or whatever you've got, and then try and find that. However, with this, what you can just do is put your cursor somewhere near there and you can see the actual readout of what the track time is. So for example, I found quite easily that 45 seconds in is about here. And this feature goes hand in hand with the length feature that I mentioned previously, because this takes into account the new starting point. So you can see now that my track is actually four minutes 30 in length. So I could now go and maybe chop off the outro of the track. 
So I can now see the length is three minutes 30 by removing that intro and outro. And this is where it's really useful. If you are having to create an edit version of a track that needs to be a certain length, for example, say the record label will say it has to be under three minutes in length, then you can kind of use this readout to just cut things away until you have that desired length. Now I should probably explain how it calculates the length because there is one little bug that we haven't been able to squash yet. And I'm not quite sure we will be able to just generally because the way Ableton works. So the plugin looks for the very last clip within your arrangement and then uses that as the finish time for the track. However, there is a little bug depending on where you put your cursor and your loop point. For example, at the moment it says that it finishes at 3.31. However, if I put my cursor over here, it actually says it now finishes at 3.37. It takes into account the cursor position. So just make sure that your cursor is somewhere within your track and then it will give you an accurate readout. This is also the same for the loop region as well. If you kind of move the loop region over it takes into account that as well for some reason unfortunately these are two little tiny bugs that are a bit of a pain uh, but we haven't been able to squash yet because i think it's just something within ableton and the final feature is just a simple little helper to help you remember what key and scale you're currently working in now my memory is terrible and sometimes when i'm working on a project i forget what key or scale it's in so what i usually have to do is click on a midi clip and then see what kind of scale i've set it to so what I've actually done is add a feature within the plugin to allow you to set what key and scale you're actually working in. Now this feature doesn't do anything clever in any way. It doesn't interfere with your project. It's just a simple way to note down the key and the scale that you're currently working in. So you can just see it for reference. And there it is, my first Max for Life plugin transport time. Now, I wish I had come up with a better name for it, but unfortunately I couldn't really think of anything else and it kind of just makes sense. It was born out of frustrations I had with Ableton and little things that I kind of wish were in there, little features that I would just make my workflow a whole lot better. So that's why I kind of came up with this plugin. I had a little bit of help with it as well. I couldn't do all the clever stuff, but I kind of came up with the idea for it. So I've got some help building it. But generally, this has been something that's kind of been in my head for months and months. And finally, it is something that has been helping me in my projects. So hopefully it'll help you too. Now, if you want to get hold of this, you can get hold of it from my Gumroad page. I'll put a link in the description below. At some point, I will have a website, but it is free. You'll be able to download it for free. There is a way of donating a little bit of money if you want to. If you feel you love it and it's useful to you, then, you know, I don't I don't discourage you from doing that. But you can download it for free. Uh, but definitely let me know in the comments below if this has been useful, if there's anything you've noticed about it, any extra features you'd want in it. Uh, for me, it's been something that is really helping my workflow out so much within the last week or so. And I just had to get out to you guys. So I hope you enjoy it. Right, 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 right now. I'm gonna bring you back to the form.